So this is return of the CTVR4 power supply, but it's not the same one. We said when we did that brand new one, which was owned by the son of the CTVR, the late CTVR owner, we said that it was doing 2.6 amps, and it'd be nice if it could do three. And one of the design kind of limitations was the way they've done the diodes. Now, when we've made our replica one of these, we've done the board which is used in the shall we say the 5 to 7 amp one you know it's three it's a 5 amp surge no it isn't it's 3 amp surge you know so this you know there's two ways of looking at this you could do we could swap the board for hours which would definitely make it do 3 amps or we can see if there's just a couple of components we can swivel around uh, to make it do 3 amps and that would be to go for four diodes rather than the two I think for a start and to add an extra capacitor in on the uh, smoothing side of things now this one I don't know this is one we bought from a radio rally it's got a legal plug on which is a bit dirty once cleaning up it's got the shroud for pins so that's okay um, it, we're gonna have to check it's got the right fuse in it though um, I'm not that bothered at this minute what we will do is unscrew the thing. I bought this from either a radio rather or it's coming with the CV radio and it's got the, this is why they were banned because that fuse stays put and you could get a shock from it. It has to be withdrawn when it comes out with the fuse holder. So that's the first thing. But to be honest, considering how old these are, it's in nice condition. So we'll pop the screws out of it. And we've got the two diodes, the one capacitor, and you've got, I think the printer circuit will accommodate two capacitors, and the printer circuit will accommodate four diodes if we do some different wiring. So we've got to rewire this anyway for it's safe on the primary, but on this one we're going to modify the main board uh, in the hope that we can actually get three amps out of it. So first thing I'm going to do is uh, we'll start taking the, the parts out. So the idea is that the mains goes in, neutral will go straight to the, the single pole switch, neutral will go to the transformer primary and the live will go straight to the fuse, from the fuse to the switch, from the switch to the primary. So that's how we do it. So we're going to modify it, we're going to do the capacitors but we're going to alter it. OK, so we've got to the stage where I've done the mains wiring. So we've now got the live going straight through to the fuse. It's the new type of safe fuse holder. The live goes out of there, goes to the switch, goes from the switch to the primary of the transformer. The neutral goes all the way through to the primary of the transformer. We've got shrouding on everything that needs shrouding. We'll be doing a, a leakage check as well, of course. So what we now need to do is the electronic side of this. So we need to pop these capacitors out and put new ones in. So when we look at the printer circuit board you can see that this one has got space for a second one, for obviously for a different power supply they sold at the time and we can just put those in parallel and conversely with the diodes you've got the two diodes in there and you can see they're just parallel up for more current availability and that's all we're going to do. The printer circuit's already there. There's nothing we need to do except clean the holes up and put the parts in. So we've got two 1N540 double O diodes. So they're 50 volt rated at 3 amps. So we'll put those in. We've got two new 2200 microfarad capacitors at 35 volts. And the ones which are in are at 25 volts. We're doing it better than and these are 105 rated as well then we're changing the two 100 microfarad ones there in the control electronics so we'll come back to the video in a moment I think I've been talking to myself so we checked the plugs and it was a 13 amp fuse so I've put a 3 amp fuse in 
We're just going to check because we don't know this power supply worked anyway. So I've got the power supply up here. Bearing in mind you've only got 26 volts as a maximum um, on this board, but I don't want you know don't want to be shorting anything out, do I? 13.45. So that seems to be working fine. Good. And what we'll do? Obviously, we'll put that right together. Um, just test these capacitors I've taken out. They're probably all right, but at the end of the day, this is 40 years old, and you don't want to be having 40-year-old capacitors. Let's see whether we can all see that. So there's four capacitors, three capacitors. So oh, you can see now we've added the extra one. We've added the extra two diodes. Well, that's a good start. That oh no, it was my leads. 116. Nineteen. That's got the highest ESR. In this is S W R then. Actually, that works. Anyway, we're going to check them all away. The one's a bit iffy, and uh, that's what we do. And so basically, that capacitor, the other two dows, it's just about a pound's worth of stuff. So it's not a big deal, and the book. The board already accepts them, but the proof of the pudding is going to be in eating. We'll get this screwed back together and um, we'll get the power supply test unit on. And let's see, put it through its paces. Right, let's see what this thing's doing. 13.4 volts, let's get some amps. Uh, we're at 0.1 of an amp. Started at half an amp. Thirteen volts. Try and get that a bit more into shot. I know we're on a bit of an angle here today. Ooh, Twelve point eight volts. So this is your normal transmit for UK CB. Two amps, twelve point twelve point two effectively, isn't it? It's gonna feel the temperature of that transistor. Two point six, this is where the previous one ended. So it will do three amps, but you now look at eleven point seven volts, whereas the other one just dropped off to nine point something. So the highest you're going to come across on the multi-norm sets is two and a half amps um, on the AMFM sets. So that is okay. So let's just I'm just going to put. We'll just put. Oh, so I'm going to cut it off. We'll just see what happens if we put three and a half amps on it. Just put it on for a moment. Yeah, it's dropping to ten. So it will do three amps. So there you go. That's uh, <laughs> that's the proof of the pudding, etc. So simple modification. The the holes are already there, and uh, the diodes will run a little bit cooler. But normally the type, they're all right anyway because you're only going to be ever drawing one amp out of them. But, um, just accommodates that little bit more headroom by adding those components. So we'll pause the video and we'll get the um, pat tester out. Okay, here we go. So I'll hold the probe on the metal chassis. We'll go for the right test. Must remember to switch it on. Right, we'll try that again. It 
it's how tight I've got this on. Excellent, right. Just uh, needed the sharp point of it um, cleaning on to there. Good, well, that's that done. So we'll put the lid on it. I'll just do one final test with you, and that's the silly one into the light bulb. Don't know where one of our prods has gone, but it uh, looks like we're going to have to push the wires in. this light bulb broken. You know what, I think that light bulb had it. That's disappointing. It's not lighting up. See if we've got another one. So these are just about two amps, 21 watt carbol. And there we have that lighting up fine. Good. I'm going to put a modification sticker on, so I'll just pause the camera once again. There we go, it's all finished ready to go. I've put a modification record on the back and I've struck through number one so if I ever see this again I know this is the one that we've modified It's because the first one we've ever tried um, I say we brought it up from the 2.6 amps to 3 amps so there we go success. Thanks for watching.